Hey everybody, it's the program here yeah. on TV once again, once a day, every day. Yeah. Turn on the machines and then we start talking for an hour. That's right, it's the program. Hello everyone. Yeah, Welcome to your daily hour with me. We're keeping it a little quiet here, but I think we're going to be pretty loud. The viewers still through the thing. It's Monday. Monday. Yeah. Hello people. So, Dan is here for Mondays. Carl's back. When was last time you heard Carl's been here for a while? Um, I would say it's about a, a week. Maybe a week and a half or something a like that. A week and a half, really? You were here a week Yeah, you were here sure. last week. You were you? I think you Last were. Monday? W were you, was I here with you last Monday? I don't believe you were. Oh, oh so I don't believe so. Maybe it's been maybe two weeks. Well, you know, maybe a lot <laughs> like I joked earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Weeks. yeah. Life happens. Life happens. What have you been uh, doing there for the past couple weeks, sir? You know, I've been trying to be focused on on um, on my music project, and it's really kind of solidifying. Um, I I was uh, uh, it, it kind of came to me in in uh, kind of like this bolt of of the creative process that I I have my music, um, um, you know, engaging in my music. Um, I'm going to ask Dan if he ever heard of the band KLF. Yeah. Uh, like the three, two, two a.m. Eternal. The, the, there's the, there's this uh, really um, um, like nineties like. Uh, Super techno song called uh, 2 a.m. Eternal or, or 3 a.m. Eternal. Anyway, it's by a band in a uh, musical act um, way back in the 90s called, uh, called KLF. Yeah. And one of the other projects that they did, which I thought might have been more popular, but it didn't really get. Carl is hardly coming through. It's hardly coming through. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the album that didn't necessarily get, um, more airplay, but I think could have, was, uh, um, KLF's, um, um, uh, record called, um, Chill Out, and in this record, Chill Out, you know, this is going back to when I was in high school, around 91 to 94, you know, because you know, KLF, the 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. Eternal song, that was around, the, you know, the, the 90s as well, when I was in, when I, when I was in high school. And so, anyway, uh, generally speaking, there, there's, uh, you know, these, uh, um, uh, it was totally, you know, mixed by LPs and, and phonograph records, I guess. But um, you know, that's what they were mixing at the time. You know, they and plus, the te technology was much much less sophisticated. Yeah. Uh, the, now you have MP3 files and whatnot. You can kind of uh, drop a beat um, just by you know uh, pressing the button. But anyway, they had uh, a little bit of harder time to uh, mix their their s song. You know, they, they had to um, do it uh, at an hour length. You know, if, if there was something that went wrong, they uh, kind of stopped it. And I guess that they would uh, not do it over again that day. You know, because uh, people are. Uh, um, if you get too involved in your project, you start making up mistake after mistake after mistake, and you do it, you, you know, um, the, the, you know, like the... Uh, you overwork the problem. Right, you the, overwork the, the problem. thing that you're doing. Right, yeah. right. But anyway, uh, the, uh, the, they would have these uh, sound effects of, 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 of wind 
um, you know, like uh, streams or you know r rivers and, and you know just like speeding cars that drive by it, it just kind of spoke to me in some sort of um, uh, uh, really um, interesting way anyway uh, the album is called chill out and uh, you know I think um, an individual hey hey listen if you if you remember to uh, send me a link Oh, it's Send me a link. I've heard of the band. I didn't get into techno until 94, 95, right around then. The first time I heard it, I liked it. Mm -hmm. the, the very first time I, I heard any kind of techno, um, <clears throat> most of the songs that I gravitated to growing up had synthesizer stuff in it. Uh, they didn't have the beat, the same beat as techno, but I loved the techno because it, it was all electronic music. It wasn't necessarily a guitar and drums. It was this new technology, and it was all done uh, <laughs> with computer chips, essentially. Uh, you know, it wasn't a physical thing that someone did. Although, um, I don't know if I would qualify Crystal Method as techno, but there is a strong electronic element the beat is more of a rock beat. Generally, they have some songs that are, that are the fast dance beats. Um, <clears throat> uh, but I just loved the style and the elements and the, the aesthetic of the music, uh, different ones that I heard. Some more than others, of course, but uh, generally <clears throat> uh, I liked it. And so I heard of the bands and I've seen the name, uh, but I would have to listen to the music to be able to place mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. place place imagery to it. You, you would need to hear the whole album of of this um, uh, chill out album. Uh, one of the, the so tracks. So it's it's techno then. Well, no, actually, it's really not really technical techno from what I can um, ascertain uh, with with my words. It's kind of hard to describe, but. Like you got one track on there that's got like a steel string guitar, and you have Elvis singing, and he's talking about maybe some poor boy or poor girl that's born on the tracks or something. Like oh yeah, 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 yeah. In the ghetto, that song. Yeah, yeah. But they and, added stuff to it. Oh yeah, like birds chirping and whatnot. You, you know, not not within that specific track, but throughout the whole. You know, album chill out is, is really kind of an interesting. Um, what about it though? Is a song that that um, I kind of you know dug into into my into my brain of why I was. How, how old? How old were you at the time? Oh, I was in middle school, but I was trying to dig into my brain to understand why I was adding like rolling surf and you know like seagulls into my music. And no, actually, you know, having, you know, the, the voice box here, you know, the, um, the uh, rolling surf and the, and the chirping birds on the program, you know, and, and, and you know, everything kind of helps remind me of, you know, you know, like, you know, it's all connected. So, mm -hmm. um, anyway, um, Kenny uh, played, um, like, uh, a brief two or three minute um, back when he was in the attic studio a couple of weeks ago. You listen to some of your tracks, yeah. Yeah, and it was like, hey, Carl, you got in some inspiration from the show. And, you know, I, I kind of laughed about it, but then I had to think, no, this goes back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this further. This goes back years. <laughs> but that's okay. All you right, know. well, you're so, when, when, you know, your album's going to drop sooner. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to drop the album soon. Gonna um, add all of the songs that I created and I released on SoundCloud to kind of get me up to that iTunes limit of oh you you gotta have like 30 or 40 songs in order to sell on iTunes okay but I'm gonna have some of them be for free because I already released them and it's it doesn't make any sense you know like this the song you, you know to be on YouTube for me to sell specific tracks of that or the whole track, you know, at 99 cents per track, it just doesn't make sense. If I released it, you know, it should still be free, right? 
Hey, look at that. It's time for the dice game. Yeah, did we get a pin? No, we're gonna find a pin. We're gonna get a pin here. We're number down our hands between one and six. I don't know if that one's gonna be. Yeah. Yeah, we'll use the Sharpie. Sharpie works. Well, how was your week, Dan? You see anything on the streets, or are you like. Uh, I saw. Uh, oh, what I see. Uh, uh, ladder truck. I gotta write my number down. Fire truck. Mm-hmm. We call them ladder trucks in Canada or something? Minutes. Yeah. I saw an emergency vehicle go through um, um, Olympia's west side, but I, I didn't have the time to kind of Take a look at what this truck was doing. Did you there happen to see what the truck was Oh, it was, was just doing? driving down Harrison. Oh. It's a... I lost as well. Me also. I don't know. Who's up? Points to go. <coughs> so you, you just saw the fire truck just driving down the street not doing anything? Hmm. They weren't in the street, but I saw chickens. Where is um, that? I was uh, in Tacoma this weekend. I did I did a whole bunch of stuff. Don't let your meat last, motherfucker. Oh wait, yeah. <laughs> That's right. right. Okay. Um. Oh. Um. Saturday was was crazy. Um, Friday night I was rushing to get Sanders' painting done for his birthday. I didn't finish it. I just I just couldn't do it, and I ended up going to sleep at like three. I had to get up at 8 to go to work. I got to work. I taught a, a class. I did a seminar, I guess, on working Facebook and G+. Uh, teaching two different uh, members at the station uh, how Facebook worked and G+, worked and, and just all the little buttons and things that you can get and have and do and all this sort of thing. And. Uh, uh, one person was diametrically opposed to all that is Facebook and is in the early stages of loathing of G+. Yeah, how come they're taking the class then? She just, she just, I don't know, I don't know, I don't okay. know, I don't know, that's just her Me, bent. Meet the enemy, see the enemy. I, yeah. I understand that there's a lot of people in the Olympia area that loathe Facebook. IRC instead, internet, or er, internet relay chat, IRC, in order to communicate. There's probably a lot of physical alternatives, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Well, anyway, <clears throat> and then uh, I left work and I went to Xander's birthday that was at Chuck E. Cheese's, and I was there until about five, six, and, uh, <laughs> um, I turned Xander into a little Star Wars zealot. Uh, you know, he'd, he'd watched all their cartoons and stuff, but uh, I introduced him to all six Star Wars movies. Mm -hmm. And his Did you show it to him in, in order from episode one, or did you? Did you, uh, did you do three no, through No. Did you I, do three through six, then one through three? No, I showed him the one that I thought he would like the most, and that's where uh, Anakin Skywalker is a kid. It's number one. Oh, I guess, yeah. yeah. I did start with number one. I'm like, yeah, and he's watched that probably 12 times. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's the new thing that he I heard. He hasn't even made it to I heard people six. talking about that, that kid, with, the, with the kids. Yeah. If they, if you know, if you start off the Star Wars movies number one, then you know yeah. the whole thing. And you get them hooked. It's not a, but, but, but the big twist of, you know, I'm gonna, a little spoiler, but if you don't know this, Luke is, you know, Luke, I'm your father kind of thing. You would already know that. If you watched number three, yeah, as we have, yeah. So if you, I mean, if you watch number three before you watch number, um, I guess seven, then it's not, it's not a surprise. Yeah, that's so true. So it's, it's changed. Well, number three, and number six were kind of dark, somewhat dark films. Yeah, but, but if you watch number, but the whole reveal of your father, so it's going to change the whole dynamic of the movies. So all the kids, they get the one through three already. 
it's, yeah. it changes their experience of the movies. Yeah, number three was pretty dark. Uh, he turns into Vader. Yeah. yeah. Did you um, did you give did you give the uh, kid Star Wars stuff for his birthday? Or? No, I have all the movies. Oh yeah. So we watched uh, three, all three, the first three, and we hadn't gotten to the fourth until I don't know a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And then we'll watch the fifth. And uh, uh, I have tons of toys, tons of Star Wars toys, tons of Star Trek toys. And uh, when we finally watch number six, I'll start introducing him to Star Trek. <laughs> I'm the devil. Mm. Yeah, so, so, uh, so, so anyway, uh, for his birthday, uh, he's got an Xbox 360. So uh, I went to the game boutique, yeah. whatever, electronic boutique in the mall. Yeah. And I found one for less than 20 bucks. Game. And it was the Star Wars, but they're all Legos. Star Wars Lego game, yeah. I've mm -hmm. heard of that. They're the Lego game. They're the characters. They're all Legos. And uh, I think he played it for six hours. Wow. But I was gone. See, after the birthday thing, I went up to Tacoma. Uh, a former co-worker, Andrea, uh, her mom died a couple weeks ago. And they had a, she had a memorial. And uh, so the bus schedule, the Tacoma bus schedule, didn't allow me to get there in time to be present. Uh, and someone would have to come and pick me up at, you know, one of the places. And it was not anywhere near any bus route. It was just it was way, way far away. Anyway, uh, uh, so I went there. I helped them get everything set up, get food ready, helped do stuff. They had the memorial. I helped them clean up, washed a bunch of dishes. And I hung out for three or four hours, and uh, then I jumped on the bus ride home. But I had only gotten three hours sleep uh, that uh, Friday night, Saturday. And so walking around all Saturday, I was in a fog. I was kind of, everything was kind of fuzzy, yeah. and I had... Uh, trouble focusing, trouble um, uh, watching, listening, paying attention. You know, all my all my systems were affected. It, it, it was not good. And uh, then uh, I slept over there um, Friday night, or yeah, Friday night after after not. No, wait. Yeah, Saturday night. <laughs> I slept over, and I slept fairly well. Her couch is extremely comfortable, and. Uh, hung out with them, and I caught the bus after the memorial, and uh, what did I do? Oh, I was so tired. I was so tired. I crashed um, Saturday night, and I slept for uh, 10 hours, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was an incredibly long period of time for someone like me. Normally, six is good. Right, mm -hmm. and I don't no normally feel the need to nap. Sometimes I'm all tired, but generally I have a good amount of energy, and I'm wide awake and paying attention. Generally, you know, on six hours sleep, but uh, this this <laughs> this crashed me, and so uh, last night I ended up getting uh, a large amount of sleep. So I feel much better. I'm much more awake, and uh, I don't uh, sleep sleep dep deprivation. Uh, that's torture pretty quick. Someone wanted to torture me? Yeah. <laughs> Just do the sleep deprivation. Mm -hmm. But then, if they try and make me sign a confession, all they'll get is nonsense. Yeah. It, it will be legitimate nonsense. It won't be something I, I have to generate purposely. And so I can see how, you know, this is an effective torture mechanism because uh, after three or four days, the person is psychotic. Yeah, and sure. they can get them to sign anything. They can trick them easy. So, so uh, sadness on that one. <clears throat> anyway, so uh, uh, last night I was just exhausted and I couldn't paint. I, I haven't finished Sanders painting yet. But uh, tonight when I get home, uh, I'll be up probably until 2. And I'm going to paint a lot on there. And uh, Chris, my daughter, his mom, she's really liking it. It... Uh, it's looking pretty good. It's looking mostly the way I envisioned. I have to make some changes and do some different things. It's uh, info time. Okay. 
Are you going for it, Carl? Sure. Why okay. Not? I can try. If you don't feel like it. No, it's in I always time. feel like it. Here are answers to some frequently asked questions about the program you're watching right now. It's about Freaky We Are With Me. It's a call-in call -in television talk show that's filmed right here in Thurston County every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It airs every night, 11.30 p.m. on Channel 20. Each episode airs a week after it was taped. So Better. if you're watching this at 11.30 p.m., this episode taped at the same weekday of the previous week. If you're watching this at 2, 2 a.m., this says episode taped at the same week of the month of the previous year. You can also watch any episode on YouTube. Um, 360, 86, yeah. something, 84, <laughs> sorry, 86, 4384, no, yeah. No worries. Um, um, now, now, back, back to, the, to the program. program. Sorry, I messed you up, didn't I? I was no. trying not to. I was trying it's, not to. It's all right. I I do have to say um, um, that, you know, uh, welcome to Carl's world, where Carl tries to burn a candle, both ends of that candle, you know, at the same time. Yeah. Burning, you know, it's like, uh, why do you do that, Carl? I don't know. What, I just want to do stuff. I'm going to be more productive. What, are you staying up late to do stuff? Is that what you're talking about? Right? Yeah, yeah. It's almost like I need to have, you know, that movie multiplicity with Michael yeah. Keaton, I believe. You don't have enough time in your clone days to do all your stuff? Clone myself in order to do stuff. You find yourself yeah, spending your day and then being going to sleep and, and thinking that you haven't finished what you wanted to accomplish in the day? Yeah, so, not literally, but yeah, I wouldn't, you know, just get up from the bed. I, I would not go to sleep constantly do more stuff and more stuff and it's like well, cause you're trying to do your music stuff? yeah or or whatever you know it happens to be the topic of the day yeah if you get too much into your computer stuff you can get infomania you know about infomania have you heard about that? uh no infomania is when you when you you know you interface with the computer so much that you you know you don't sleep and you're just thinking about computer stuff all the time and you're and you're constantly plugged into the the thing and you uh Sounds like an addiction. Yeah, it's it's yeah. you know it's when the computer monitor becomes an extension of your consciousness. I'm gonna be joking here, but I'm the Borg King. Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> okay, look out, you know, you don't wanna have the computer nice. monitor become an extension of your consciousness, you gotta make sure that you have a a, a barrier, you know, between you and the computer a little bit, so Oh Carl. I'm a cross section between Jean Luc Picard and Data. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> Look out. Oh, Carl, why you so quay quay? <laughs> because I can. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Well, here's, a, here's a message. It's from Mr. Ginsu. He left a message to see what he says. He's moved to Oregon recently. So, yeah, he's let's not going to get the channel. Let's see how he's doing. Well, he hasn't gotten the channel in, in a long time. Oh. Don't let your meatloaf, motherfucker. <laughs> That's right. Don't let your meatloaf. What's going on, motherfucker, motherfucker? What's going on? I see you in the ass, the old fucking Lewis over there for a while. Walking in, he's a funny motherfucker when he wants to be. He seems to be a fucking blast. He was always a blast. Oh, uh -oh. Or maybe that's what it is. That's a blast. You yeah, have a blast from the past whenever you were with the dude. When, how long is he gonna be here? And when the fuck he getting the fuck back out of Dodge? He's gone already. He left he today. Get the fuck out of Dodge. Lewis was here for a day. He ain't coming back. Oh. <laughs> I can, uh. Does he have the interwebs? Don't let your meat low. Mr. Ginsu? No. Ginsu, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't think he's a. He yep, does. yep. Uh, come down there kicking your car. He's been caught. So hard to be wearing your ass for a hat. He had to watch the show at all. That's right. That's, uh. Fucking know I would. Interesting consistency. If I wasn't 300 yeah. fucking miles away, or something yeah, like away. that. What the fuck? I'm talking. It's a fucking long motherfucking way. Yeah. The He's leaks. The weed is not legal in Oregon. Uh, uh, apparently, they, they still have medical laws. Is what he said yesterday. What are you doing, oh, motherfucker? Right, what, what are you doing? They they make you look you up in the internet. They were one well, of the we'll early ones with medical. Where are you at? Where are you at? I ain't nowhere near you. I'm not coming down there kicking your tent. You don't have fucking to be all fucking 
pissy about it. You know, you're pissy a bunch. I'm glad. Thank or you. You're sitting on a fucking couch. Yeah. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? For not doing that. You know what I'm saying? Well, you do or don't. I would like not to be I know you there. do. Good luck. Oh, man. I've seen you before. Ha <laughs> ha Mm-hmm. Yeah. So fucking, uh... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think the first night I was here, I turned my scanner on. It was on for like 15 minutes. Some got stabbed. Somebody got stabbed. So I was like, what the fuck? Somebody got stabbed. Fucking son of a bitch. What, what did you do? <laughs> Some. Holy fuck. No, well, I don't even fucking know, man. Um, I don't know. You don't Somebody know. told me if you get in three fights when you're in Oregon, they kick you out and put you in jail for like three strikes law or something. No, they got the three, three strikes law. But that's violent. Violent. I thought they were violent felonies or something. I guess violence is a felony down here or something. Well, don't get in three assault charges, that's a good... Hey, anything new, fill up those prisons. Yeah. <laughs> Prison industrial complex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So today, I converted to Linux. Ooh. All Linux, all day. It's good for me. Uh, How it's is that transition going for you, sir? Well, I successfully got on the internet. I, um, my friend Lawrence uh, came down from Tacoma. It's his wife had the memorial, and he brought a, a new computer. The the one I had was ten years old. <clears throat> it had good systems, but it was old and it was starting to fail, and it needs new stuff. I think uh, the stuff on it that worked worked well, and other stuff was fading. So. Um, What else? Uh, it's a very different environment. Now, at work, I work on uh, PC programs. At home, I work, or I did work, I was working on PCs, using a PC to do stuff, uh, and Windows, Microsoft environment. Uh, at work, it's a Mac, Mac environment, Mac tools, Mac this, Mac that. Learn that adapt well, adapt back and forth, and there at the station there's a member computer that's Linux. And it looks completely different. It's a very different looking system. And I uh, figured that out sufficiently to do stuff. I just had to be shown a few things. And uh, it's like driving three different cars, really. I mean, they're all operating systems. And uh, all of them have uh, uh, a good analogy is a is a motor vehicle all of them have a steering wheel a gas a brake uh, gears radio lights uh, windshield wipers horn you know all the stuff they have all these all the same things but they're located in different places and uh, activating them may or may not require different uh, one step or two step process and finding stuff and so for me really it's a matter of getting to know how the desktop how the interface works and where stuff is and how to access stuff and not to let myself get too frustrated too quickly if it doesn't do exactly what I want right away but I would like to get to know it uh, Linux systems are not attacked uh, n anywhere near like Microsoft systems um, Mac systems are not attacked uh, anywhere near like Microsoft systems. Um, so much stuff is Microsoft proprietary. I know that there's going to be issues with getting a program and uh, wondering if it's going to work with Linux. And so anytime I acquire any, anytime I purchase a program that works with Linux, I'm going to have to do a little bit of research and make sure that it does. So um, the, it works fast. It's, the computer is really quiet. It's got a giant fan <laughs> in it. And uh, so it's really quiet. This other one is like mm. So, uh, but uh, what Lawrence did is he took my old hard drive and stuck it in and 
uh, it acts as a slave, meaning it's a second hard drive, and to get anything from it, I have to go to that hard drive, open up the the files and or programs or whatever that I want, and tell Linux to open them up or grab them and copy them and use them. And so I'll have varying degrees of success. Um, <clears throat> what I was able to do is on the old hard drive, I had uh, a bunch of folders with photos. My daughter has a pile of photos and a Word document that she needed. And uh, there we go. Three, three, three. Oh, <laughs> well, it adds, it adds up to three. <laughs> it, it does? Uh, yeah, yeah, one and two make three. What, is, what, what are the numbers? One and two. One, one two. and two and four. I have a two, I won. Here, wait, here. There, there they are. Yeah, five more points. You win, Carl? No, that's a five. It was a four. It was a four. Well, I already You got a, you have to do one, Carl? Or two? Uh, I have a one. Oh, you do me and Carl are tied for five more points, and you're losing right now, but you can still make it come back. I still can. I it's have one doubles. more chance. So anyway, so the, the Linux is very interesting. The environment is a little bit different, but uh, I was able to do stuff that I wanted to. And in fact, Linux looks more like a Mac operating environment than it does a PC environment. And being familiar with Macs and where stuff is and how to do stuff, uh, I, didn't, uh, I didn't encounter frustration very quickly. It was nice. Well, um there are d different flavors of Linux out there, but uh, are you using PinGuy? PinGuy OS. Pen OS? PinGuy is. Are you uh, using Ubuntu? Is that one of the Linux systems? Yeah, that, that's one of the. Uh, that's a flavor of Linux. Do you know which one it is? Pen PinGuy OS. I bet it's no. Ubuntu. No, this one is is the latest, the very latest, is whatever it, that is. Is it not Ubuntu? Ubuntu. Ubuntu, yeah, it's Ubuntu. Oh, sweet. but I don't know what variation of U Ubuntu. All right, well, there, there's like a, like you got Ubuntu, you got uh, Pinguy OS, um, you got you know like uh, uh, Microsoft ME, you got my Microsoft or Windows XP, Windows ME, you got different flavors of operating systems. So. Um, it's pr you know. it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Anytime you want to do anything major in it, you have to type in passwords. Uh, uh, you don't have to type in a password to get in, but if you want to do any uploading or downloading or uh, activating programs or anything, you have to type in a password. The one I have, is, the current one that I have, is is sufficient right now, but I need to complicate it more. I need a more uh, complicated one. Uh, one that's more personal that I remember. Now, oh. it's got to have letters, numbers, uh, an exclamation mark, or the little, uh, what's that little wavy thing? That's a tilde. A tilde, something like that. It's got to have two, three different things. Uh, one, one that I can remember, basically, but it's got to be uh, tricky, so that it can't be hacked easily. Yeah, th there's a program on the map called Access, I believe. Okay. And uh, it helps you to uh, figure out a password. And you, you can do it like alphanumeric, or you, you can, you know, um, there's a sl slider of how long the password can be, you know, and you have it somewhere memorable. Like, uh, I, try and, I try and have 10 or 12 altogether. Right. But, you know, like it would bunch together. Like specific le letters, like, um, oh, I don't know. Looking at this uh, tape right here, it might, you know, put in the word Buffy, because I think Buffy is somewhat of a common name, at least in the dictionary, or, you know, in, in um, you know, human vernacular language. You know, See, I would, do, Buffy I would, I would do something like uh, a password, a password using the word Buffy mm -hmm. that I would use would be. <laughs> uh, Buffy, the number four, mm -hmm. and then my ass, <laughs> and well, then the S's would be dollar signs. 
Well, yeah. Um, you the other way? You talk about your passwords. Oh, your that, passwords. that is nothing I would ever use. Oh, all right. <laughs> that is, that, but that's, that's a quick example of a good, complicated password. I've been doing Password. passwords for years. Yeah. Yeah, you have, you have a word that passwords. you can remember. Uh, you have a number in there, or two, or three, if, you, if, if they are useful, if you, if you can remember them. And or then, uh, an acronym. You could have an acronym, yeah. like a memorable acronym. SWAT, S-W-A-T, if that was your favorite uh, sitcom growing up. Did you ever watch uh, SWAT? Okay, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, you're young at heart, bro. Well, um, yeah, that too, of course. But All right, well, that's computer stuff. I think I want to... Okay. I want to call Ben Farr. He's scheduled to be here tomorrow. Ben Farr. You can keep him. Mean, so that's your password. So you have a new computer and you got passwords. I think that's a... The, the, an honorable thing. Yeah, it's a, that's, that's a an, good I thing. Mean, that's enough stuff about com computers. Okay. Though, I think, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is going... It's ringing. Oh. More options. Hey Ben, it's the program. Uh, you're scheduled to be here tomorrow, so you can call us back. Monday, Dan, talking to you. Hello. Good night. Okay. There goes. Well, hey, uh, you hear about the Philippines? Yes. Yeah. That's uh, that is really kind of really too bad. That's 195 big, miles big. per hour wind gust or. Uh, is there a death toll? They saw this coming. They saw this coming. They had about two days good solid warning. They knew in the general area where it was coming. And people that figured they could they could hack it uh, were prepared somewhat. But they saw this one coming. This one had uh, a huge amount more energy than any previous uh, hurricane or tsunami. It had way more energy. The winds were uh, not double, but they were at least 75% uh, more than the the fastest winds they could measure. Ever like, in the history of mankind. Yeah. Well, er, not the in the history of mankind. In the history of measuring tornado winds. Mm. I heard that the Philippines is mostly gone. Or it's underwater or something. I have not heard any, I have not read or heard, I haven't been taught, I haven't had time to be on Facebook, I haven't had time to read news, yeah. uh, or watch news, uh, I just knew it was, it was huge, and uh, wind speeds were well over 200 miles an hour, which oh. is unusual. Well, I didn't know 200, I thought it was like 195. 200, that's crazy, yeah. 200 is, is fast enough. They're you. still they're still calculating because uh, they only had machines on the grounds to record wind speed, and they only had because uh, uh, satellite data essentially and Doppler radar data, and uh, it changed uh, as the hurricane travels over a landmass. Any landmass. Uh, same thing. Oh. Same thing. Uh, essentially. Essentially, they're called one thing in the Atlantic, and they're called something else in the Pacific. And in the Atlantic, they're a... They're not a typhoon. Uh, they're something else. I'm forgetting the name. Uh, it's a the swirly storm. A hurricane, right? That's a, it's a hurricane. It's a big thing that happens every fall, essentially. Fall and spring. Uh, Oh, actually, no, it's in the spring in the northern hemisphere and the fall in the southern hemisphere because the, the, the season is the opposite. Our fall is their spring. Their spring is our fall. So, <clears throat> so uh, uh, they, get the, they get the typhoons, and it's called typhoon over there. But it's essentially uh, a storm that swirls and it gathers this warm water off the surface and creates this swirling massive storm and it travels uh, along uh, wind routes and in opposite directions depending on the, on the hemisphere that it's in. And they begin in the tropic region and they work their way to the subtropics and up north. And they follow a path this way or that way. Actually, it's, it's 
Yeah. Hey, it's so. time for a commercial break. When we get back from the commercial break, we'll probably call Freddy the producer, and uh, we'll find out some more science stuff, maybe. Yeah, I'll tell you more. Sweet. I know all the sciences. Some more than others. Some better than others. Bill Nye the science guy. Bill, Bill, Bill. Bill. And, I, and I make mistakes sometimes. I'm off a little dance in my tats. Sometimes close, so but not exact. Dance. Live TV dance party. For the station. First that Friday of each month. 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. TCTV Studio A. Commercial. Oh, hey, we're talking about the program tonight. Uh, we got a good one, I think. We just uh, we just filmed it. Yeah, Ben talks all about being in jail. We talk about jail, nanobots. I listen to a voicemail of myself. We're on every night at 11:30 and 2 a.m. on TCTV channel 22. Rock and roll. Not just them, but Tim Iman. Tim Iman. Tim Iman. Kind of bad too. Hey, five seventeen failed, by the way. Well, yeah, but another I mean of his little poison pills. Well, to drain the budget of of uh, public transit, though. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like he was successful once. Two, three. People have hated him since. Fifteen years ago. Yeah, that's crazy. Probably more, almost like yeah, seventeen years ago. People have hated him since then because they associate, they remember how frustrating it was and how, how much they suffered essentially. And it was like it was his thing that happened. And so he was hated by a lot of people. It was very horrible with the buses. Yeah. A lot of people. I wonder. Most, most everyone that I know. Most everyone. I. I there are a few people that never have hey, do over. I can't come to the phone right now, but, but if you leave my message, then I'll back as soon as I can. Thanks a lot. Hey, Freddy. Hey, Freddy. Uh, you have about 20 minutes to call us back if you want to make it on the show today. Uh, how's the production going? Thanks. Bye. Bye. Oh, yeah, so are you, are you, uh, the other thing failed too, the 522 thing. Yeah. yeah. It would have passed in Thurston County, uh -huh. King County, or Kitsap County. Three, there are three counties that would have passed. And I am pleased uh, that Thurston County was one of those. By by good majority, like 60-40. 60, 60, so uh, uh, actually, no. Thurston, I think it was more like 55-45. So the rest, of the, the rest of the country, or the state is... In varying is degrees, no one. The, 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 rest the, of the state red, didn't like yeah, it. yeah, the very red states, the heavily Republican counties. states. Counties. Uh, counties, sorry. <laughs> so the the heavily Republican counties, it passed by a large margin, uh, and the more purple it got and then bluer it got, uh, the more the vote shifted away from uh from to yes. Yeah. Two, yes. Well, generally, Washington picks Democrats, right? I mean, but I guess... General, well, well, here's the thing. In the, uh, and it's the, this is true in all the states in the country. Uh, the more urban an area becomes, the more liberal it becomes. The bluer it becomes, the more Democrat it becomes. And uh, it seems to be consistent throughout the country. You know, even in the in the deep south, the urban places tend to be more uh, uh, 
uh, less conservative, Liberal more progressive. Oriented. Well, progressive. I'll say progressive. Liberal has several meanings that I have argued with people over. Fair uh, enough. But progressive seems to be a consistent term that generates less argument. So, <laughs> so, so th that's why I use the term progressive. Um, so uh, I was deeply saddened, deeply, deeply saddened. I had hope, you know. I just, I just wanted fucking labels. I'm, just I'm happy about the lack was. of labels, but yeah. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to know, does it have it? Does well, it not? Well, well that's, all I, um, that's all I wanted. Th this is one of the things that, that I came across in the feedback um, on on Facebook. Um, I guess it's up to the consumer, you know, by by the. Uh, truckload or whatnot to just go to Top Foods or Safeway or wherever you shop and say, excuse me, is this GMO, you know, or is this GMO, and, and to have apparently, so many people ask those questions, uh, you apparently, know. Apparently, organic food is not GMO. Mm -hmm. that yeah, yeah, but you can have that USDA organic label, you know, just like slapped on. I mean, or, organic means a pesticide. Just about anything, because, you know, those restrictions for having that label has been loosened. I think that, that that's the same thing that would have happened with the GMO labeling, though. Uh, possibly, but I, I guess my thinking is, is by choosing organic, I'm less likely to encounter what GMOs. Is, what does the organic label even mean, though? That's the thing. It the is how the plant is grown. But what does that how mean? How? Process. Yeah, that's that's what it is. But like, but, what, but, what what are the how? What are the what? What do you mean by how? You know, how, well, so general. Okay, generally, organic food, uh, the the pesticides, herbicides, fertilizer, and uh, harvesting methods. Uh, Involve much fewer chemicals, man-made chemicals. These are these are compounds that are found in nature in abundance that are used, and it's a little more expensive to concentrate these compounds and use them for pesticides, herbicides, and fertilizer. So but that's like how, that how is much, a big difference. How much of this other stuff can they use compared to this other well, stuff to well, get the label? Okay, okay. Here's an example. Uh, let's say you want to fertilize uh, an acre of corn, right? Yeah. You want to fertilize that acre of corn, and you can use chemicals. You buy the chemicals from Dow Jones or some subsidiary or something like that, and it's the proper ratios of the different elements that the corn needs to grow well and get all that needs to produce big fat ears. Okay? You can get the same compounds from bullshit. I'm not kidding. Yeah. I'm not kidding. There is a farm that has uh, 10,000 steers on it, and they will go to slaughter and be meat and this sort of thing, but they shit a lot. Mm -hmm. And there's all kinds of bullshit. Actually, it wouldn't be it's steer shit, actually, technically speaking. But anyway. <laughs> anyway, so you have all of this uh, cow shit, mm -hmm. and that is fertilizer. Uh, but what you have to do, before it is really good fertilizer, you have to concentrate it and mix it in with other stuff and let bacteria work on it for a little while and break down a lot of the acids in it. There's a great deal of acids. And so it has to be processed, but it's processed naturally by bacteria that do that. That's what they do. That's their living. They're happy. And so, so you have to collect it, process it, and then ship it. And it's bulky because it has a lot of water in it. So, um, so that whole process is much more expensive than getting a bag of chemicals that would do exactly the same thing for the same area. As opposed to 500 gallons of uh, cow poop. Yeah, but, right? uh, but my, the big, my question is at what, at what level do they decide that it's organic? Like how much? It depends. Yeah, it's and like what well, I, I just think. I, I think that the, what I'm saying is I that there's not there's not really an answer to the question. To my question, and that's the an problem. Answer. There's an answer, but the answer is complicated. It's complicated and vague, and uh, well, so you see the sticker on there, and you think, hey, the sticker means good, 
but you don't know what the sticker means. And I don't think, I mean, maybe you know, but most people, they don't know what it means. They just see the sticker and then they want to buy it because it says organic on it. But just because the sticker on the on the thing that says organic, that doesn't mean good or anything, you know, it just means... requires a level of trust. Beliefs, yes. Beliefs, I agree. You have to believe that, oh, I see that label and, and I'm convinced by looking at the label that it's okay, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and they're like, but, oh, that's healthy. Or, it's organic, you know, it's like... Well, that's what people see, and that's what they think, and that's what the same thing would happen with those Most gym people labels. I talk to, they don't necessarily say healthy, they say more healthy. Yeah, but it's like, it's what is more healthy, and what, what at, at what point do they know, and these, I don't think that people get what the stickers even mean. Here, let's play the final dice game. Three, 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 Me and Carl three, are winning right three, now with 500 three, points each, let's see if three. I have to win. you come back. You have to get doubles to win. Uh, yes, Dan you, has to You have to, to get win. doubles, and we Dan would have to get none. Dan has to win. Dan has to Thank win. Thank you. Nope, nope Carl won. <laughs> well, <laughs> you, yeah, Carl, I got a three. <laughs> Carl won, but you get a three. I got but a you didn't three. get enough I'm to happy. win. Carl, you're the winner today. Uh, apparently I am. Congratulations. Well, yes. I won for the moment it landed. <laughs> I won... Enough to be happy. Now I'm happy. Oh, good. I'm so happy. You happy? Yeah. You didn't as, as, as long as you remove the green and that yellow dice. Exactly. That. Or I'm, just the green dice. The uh, green dice that set me ahead. Yeah. There. Okay. See, I won. <laughs> I'm the winner. All right. I'm covering the dice. I am the winner because that's what you see. Sure. And that makes me the winner. If you you can believe whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> It's like you can eat uh, eat things that are labeled organic food and pretend like they're actually organic and good for you just because the label's on it's there. It's not pretending. I think it's a pretend. I think it's a well. I think it's a little bit of a pretending thing. People buy it and then they want to buy into it. They want to feel like they're eating good things and not bad things, so they buy the organic things. But I really don't think that it makes a difference between the organic things well, and the non-organic things. Well, that argument is based on the premise that they know certain things and believe certain things when they do certain things. And I, that may not necessarily be the case. It is with you, but it's not necessarily the case with everyone else. Uh huh. I think uh, most people that, I mean, I guess it's, it's this is I'm just making it up. But I think most people who buy that kind of thing don't don't know what it means, and they just think it means good, and they buy it that some, way. Some, some, some. I would say there, there. You're absolutely right. There is a percentage of people that do that. Mm -hmm. I am saying that it's probably not a hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, it but could I, be fifty percent. Could be half. Could be more. Could I, be I, and I wild guess, but would you? Wouldn't you? You don't think it's more than like eighty percent? That's well, what I'm. Think about it. Think about it. Uh, I know people that just buy what if. Yeah. And I know people that uh, they are more conscientious in their choices. They think about what they're choosing mm -hmm. to eat. Yeah. And they take more time. And then, out of that group of people that takes a little more time and thinks about what they're eating. Out of that, there is a subset that do research. Yeah. Uh, they look things up. They check things out. They they read stuff. They they uh, are more investigative about the choices that they're making, and so they they limit their choices even more because this thing that says organic is bullshit, and that thing that says organic is meh. Uh, but these have been uh, demonstrated uh, repeatedly to be. Uh, 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 valid, valid, valid sources mm -hmm. of some kind. You know, uh, so, so, and, but that's a smaller percentage. I do want to reiterate, though, that the, um, whoever controlled the gatekeepers to this label, I, of course, it would probably be the uh, Food and Drug Administration, since it would say USDA organic. USDA? That, that they loosened. Mm -hmm. The USDA is a non-government agency that is tied in with the government. It's a separate, it's a separate agency, and they do things different. The government doesn't make them do anything, and I'm not sure how it works. It, if it's like the library system or if it's like the postal system, they're self-managed, but uh, they, they, there is this weird relationship between the USD and the government. 
uh, they're, they're, it's not government. It's weird. The FDA, absolutely government. But the USDA is it's a different creature altogether. And, and I was uh, reading about this, and I was like, well, what, what, what is this? Um, I used to think the Red Cross was some sort of government agency for a while. Uh, they really I mean, was, I was, could have been, but it No, I was listening to evolved. Bill O'Reilly at the time. <laughs> Why would you oh, ever do that? Bill oh, yeah. Well, he was complaining about the Red Cross oh, he, uh, he needs to as much or more than the government, and I was confused. And then I started doing research. No, they're a non-prop. So, so, and they're, they're not tied in with the government. They work closely with the government to do things. So, so... So, so oh, the billion. USDA, look it up. Billion, look billion, up the USDA. Billion. They're they're uh, a, a strange creature. They're very strange. I, I was gonna say the relationship between this. The, you, you were like saying government and and this other entity or or whatever, like uh, corporations as well. You know, the uh, um, corporations have this weird uh, uh, relationship with uh, government. Entities, and you know, uh, yeah. that thereby they would be able to uh, introduce um, or or have government uh, okay certain stuff that you know most normal people they don't want, like for example, in their food. Uh, corporations influence government officials to make particular decisions that benefit them. Oh yeah. So yeah. so that that. That, it's, it's always a game is, of benefits. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the only time people really have an influence on their elected rese resemblances, <laughs> their elected officials, <laughs> the only time they can really do that is when uh, they complain a lot, when groups of them complain a lot, or uh, during election time uh, and that's that's not much influence uh, if a group of individuals can pay for a lobbyist then the lobbyist will give extra influence you know it's sad but it's true kids yep 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 yep, yep. and so the corporations having way more organized abilities and way more money uh, you know, you can have the CEO, yeah, okay, listen, uh, I'm going to approve a million bucks towards this thing that will help us out. And so part of that will go to lobbyists, part of that will go to advertising, part of that will go to um, <coughs> financial benefits to uh, certain individuals. Hey, you know? it's the end of the show. Man, that was fast. Um, I didn't so. even... I didn't my beard. What the hell? Well, well, thanks, Dan and Carl. What thanks for being here today. What kind of drinker am I? Not good enough. Thanks, Mr. Gensu. Uh, what kind of science talker are you? you I don't like think science did you? Yeah, I don't we think we connected to anybody on the phones today. Uh, we <laughs> talked about a whole bunch of other stuff. I have plenty of science to talk about. Talked about a little bit about tsunami. Stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, rim shot. Well, Okay, we made it there, through that we didn't die or lose there consciousness. There are five categories of storms. This one was above that. It was We're off, have the, to off make the charts, Category huh? six. Well, yeah. Yeah. Category well, I don't know six. what's gonna happen tomorrow. Uh, Carl, you wanna come back tomorrow if Ben doesn't show up? Um, not sure if it's after like say ten o'clock. Could be. Thank you, episode number and episode date. Thank you, meteorology. Yeah, indeed. Thank you, TV22. Thank you, Hydrology. Computers, thanks. Thank you, at Atmospherology. Thank you, dear. Thank you, Sunsetology. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Check it out. Website. Phones, thank you. Thank you, Biology. Waterfalls. Crew, you guys want to be on the crew? Do you think you Thank you, Chemistry. Chinese made fireworks. Oh, that's why you say chemistry. Thank you, Digital <laughs> Photography. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Moon Tardology. Um, Washington State, USA. Thank you, Houston County. Houston County. Thank you. Bricks. And viewers, you, you're watching. Thank you, hell yeah, dog. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Geneticists. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Oh, Charlie. Bye. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye. See you later. Next Monday, probably.